Hello everybody, we are back with day 13 of WordPress for Designers on blog.themeforest.net and today is the day, uh, as promised, that we will just jump straight into some WordPress code um, and start building our paper business theme that we've been discussing in the past, uh, in the previous episodes. So, a uh, quick overview of what we'll do today. Um, the first thing we'll do is kind of get a basic theme reset going. Uh, with some basic uh, pre-made theme files for us so we don't have to worry about all the mundane code and, and making all the brand new files and we'll look into that and then uh, once we get our theme reset up we're gonna our theme reset excuse me we're going to um, make the front page static unlike most WordPress uh, blogs that you see that have the blog posts on on the home page on the index um, we're gonna make uh, use our WordPress install and make it a a uh, static home page and then our blog and our blog posts will be on uh, on a different page obviously under blog which is kinda how this design is set up so it's kind of a common question people ask is how do we make WordPress more of a static CMS and this is really kinda easy to do um, so we'll do that and then we will have kind of a mini CSS tutorial as we just get started on the header uh, the logo the background and uh, the navigation and we will uh, kind of make room for our slider and that's probably about as far as we'll get today so we'll uh, just take this one thing at a time I'm working with MAMP uh, my local server um, if you missed day one I explained how to install that so you might want to check that out but what I'm going to do is go to Firefox and if you go to ElliotJStocks.com and I'll have this link below quite a while ago he released this uh, kind of a WordPress it's not really a kind of a WordPress theme uh, that's just a blank canvas it's a starting point for anybody that's about to develop a theme and what I mean by that is it has all those theme files like header footer 404 uh, you know, archives um, all the basics but it has absolutely no markup just the you know the core loops uh, that would come with each page and the you know the get footer and the get header and that's just it'll it's really a nice time saver and a lot of people that work with WordPress um, end up using some kind of reset so if you scroll down you can download it here um, I want to note you'll see it says for 2.6.2 and we're doing uh, this with 2.7 um, just from experience I know that this works perfectly fine with 2.7 um, as I've used it plenty in plenty of themes but if you see the update right here it says for everyone who keeps asking this version works fine with uh, WordPress 2.7 so if you were uh, worried about that uh, worry no more because that will not be an issue um, and one more thing I want to touch on is if you've heard of like kind of theme frameworks like this there's there's one called uh, thematic or thematic by Ian Stewart which is really nice and if you're wondering kind of what's the difference between uh, starkers and thematic and, and what this is is, is it says it perfectly right here it says if you want something super simple to start out with strip down to the bare minimum of markup use starkers if you want the power of dynamic class names micro formats and some existing markup and styles use thematic well we just want super simple um, you know base files to work with so we don't have to go through all the redundancy again so we are going to use starkers and again we'll we'll uh, go over exactly what it is in case you're still confused but go ahead and download it for now um, I've already done so so I'm gonna open up Coda and you'll see I have a new WordPress install in my local host under the um, uh, directory of paper business if I go to WP content and themes you'll see the classic and the default theme which come with all the um, every bundle of WordPress and I'll go to my desktop and I'll click on my starkers download and then um, you can see I'm gonna rename this obviously to paper business which is the name of our theme and I'm gonna drop it into our themes folder and uh, you know and there we go basic install of our theme we'll activate it in just a second um, but yeah this is what starkers is if you if you go into paper business you see all these theme files 404 archives comments uh, you know functions index links uh, page and if we click on one of these like um, oh, I don't know page you'll see it's it's nothing but but the absolute bare basics that we would pretty much be adding anyway it's you know get header get sidebar get footer and then a basic loop 
and this is just going to make it really convenient for us, you know, we, so we don't have to, you know, come over here and create every single page with just the basic markup. So this has already kind of been done for us and gives us a nice starting point. I do want to go over, um, okay, well, let's go ahead and look at the, you know, the screenshot is the default one that comes with it. We want to replace that with our own. So if I go to Finder, Desktop, um, I thought I had a screenshot there. Yeah. Okay. And I just drag a little screenshot I've already made and I will replace it. Okay. And you can see the screenshot just looks something like that. It's uh, 300 by 255 uh, pixels, if you were wondering. But, you know, when you get a chance, you can make your own little screenshot there. And then the next thing I'll open up is style.css. And um, if you remember that, this is where we uh, give WordPress all the information about our theme. So let's go ahead and fill that out now. Our theme's name is Paper Business. Uh, we'll, for the theme URI, we'll just put blog.themeforest.net. Uh, description will be um, a WordPress theme for the WordPress for Designers video series. Simple enough. Um, version 1 and it's compatible with WordPress uh, 2.7 plus which is what we'll be making our theme for author just put Drew Douglas and we'll give Jeffrey here some credit for the design and author URI you know, I'll just put my personal website and then uh, some of the tags that we can add if you wanted to put this in a directory, a WordPress directory, obviously we're not going to be doing that, but you know, just to fill it out, we could do paper and business, I guess, would be two nice tags. We'll save that. And uh, now, you know, WordPress will be able to access our basic information. So let's discuss kind of the layout more of, of Starkers and how this is all s um, set up. Our main style.css, which is what we just edited, is right um, is in the root of the theme uh, files. Now inside the style folder is, uh, is everything else that we'll kind of need. Um, some additional CSS files, some um, fonts which we don't have anything in, we, we can get rid of that later, but that's in case you wanted to store any fonts. Um, and images, of course, we'll add those as we go along. But what I do want to talk about is the CSS folder here. And you can see we're using the at import to uh, to import the reset and uh, something called typography and layout. So what do those do? Well, let's go to reset. Okay, reset, just a basic kind of CSS reset based um, based upon the yahoo.com uh, reset. And we can just keep that. It kind of, you know, puts takes the work out of putting any kind of reset in there. And if you have a, if your own CSS reset you prefer to use, of course, go ahead and, and do what works for you. Uh, typography.css is a little page that um, Elliot put and included and besides giving all the headers a font weight of bold to make sure um, you know they're all coming off at cross browser um, okay we want to uh, you know come here and look at different kind of fonts that we could use and different uh, mixtures if you're not you know if, if you just need a kind of a reference you can use the typography.css um, I won't be messing much with this file but we can just leave it there for now. And lastly, let's go to layout.css. Now this comes with some, um, as it says, presentational classes that are generated by WordPress, so it's useful to have styles for them. So uh, almost every in, you know WordPress uh, installation will come with classes like align left, align right, align center. And these are um, just kind of classes that the users can use to easily you know, adjust the uh, styles and the look of their page without knowing too much. Um, you'll also see uh, a, a BR class of dirty little trick and this is kind of uh, just a way to clear any floats you have. As you know there's many techniques but uh, we might use that sometime. And you set all divs to the position of relative. Now it's nice that uh, he's done that but that's kind of the only thing I don't like about this theme is I'd rather just know I'd rather have full control over um, the position of my divs and I wouldn't rather have them all be set to relative by default so I'm just going to take that out and uh, and go ahead and save layout.css without that. 
So that said, um, let's go ahead and go into our theme. And uh, you can see here's the the default theme showing on our installation of you know our local host at Paper Business, the directory we talked about, because we haven't activated our new theme yet. So let's go ahead and go down, refresh themes. Okay, we'll see available themes and paper business with our nice little screenshot and a WordPress theme for designers, uh, WordPress theme for the WordPress for designers video series. Okay, and we'll, and if you see here the preview, see how absolutely nothing is styled and you can see how that kind of uh, comes in with the blank theme that we're using right now. So we'll activate paper business. Okay, with our new theme activated, we can visit our site. Oops, I already have it open here. We'll just refresh. Okay, so not much very not very much going on here. The next thing that we need to do um, is go into Coda, and we want to set up a page um, without touching index.php, which is going to serve as our as our blog. Um, home page we want to just set up a custom page uh, that will serve as our front page our home static page so if you go to page uh, dash custom dot php this is how you would make a uh, a custom page in WordPress you just template name and a comment uh, at the very top then we're just going to name this front page and you can see the only thing this page is doing right now is getting the header and then grabbing the footer and we'll, we will be able to insert um, you know, like things like the slider in between here and any other um, loops or things that we would need for the home page will go in between uh, this get header and get footer. And the last thing we want to do is rename that from page custom to front underscore page or something of the likes. Okay, we got that. Now before we uh, move on, I want to show you, if I go to pages and click edit, you'll see I've just... Uh, already created our basic pages. If I go to the screenshot here, you see we have you know a home about services portfolio blog contact just to save us some time here and so I don't confuse anybody. I've already come in um, and made a bunch of them so you might want to do that before we uh, go on any farther just make a bunch of default um, pages here. And now we will uh, scroll down to settings and then reading. Okay, now it says front page front page displays, and it's uh, usually by default it's at your latest post. But what we're going to do is click a static page, and on the drop down for the front page, we want home to be our front page, and we want the page named uh, blog to hold our post, our individual blog posts. And so we'll click save changes. Okay, so now we're almost there to having a static home page. Um, we know that we want our front page to be home. Now what we need to do is go into Pages, click Edit, and we'll edit our home page. And you can see I just have some default um, uh, text here. And uh, don't worry about the custom fields right now. We will touch on that later. And under template, it's usually going to be at default template, which would be page.php. But now that we know we want our home, um, any of this content is going to serve as our front page, we want to use our front page, our specific front page uh, custom template. So we'll click template, front page, and uh, update page. Okay, now if we refresh, we can see. Uh, now our home page has changed to just our header, uh, our navigation, which is in our get header, and our footer. And um, if we go to Coda, that's exactly what we want. Um, this is now, in essence, our front page, the get header and footer. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, we have a static front page now. That was pretty simple. If I go to blog, you'll see uh, there's our default blog post, and it has everything else here that... Uh, a regular index.php file has uh, by default and we've easily kinda <coughs> excuse me we've easily made our uh, our home page static here so the next thing we need to do is kinda get the logo looking nice and um, mess around with our header.php and our style.css file 
um, and we're going to focus on you know we're just going to take it from the top to the bottom here on our home page so if we pull uh, I have the screenshots pulled up here and we're going to be focusing on our uh, paper business logo our navigation and we might touch on the slider today it just depends on how far we get and of course our background so that said we can get rid of our front page at PHP for now well, we know our front page our, uh, our home page is pulling off is saying get header so we need to see what we're working here with header and it's also getting our footer so we'll open up footer and lastly we will need our style.css so we can go ahead and start styling our theme well the first thing that we want to do is set up uh, some general styles here so I'm going to try to keep this as organized as possible and comment it out um, as well type header styles now I'm going to say body and we need to set the uh, the background to that noise that we sliced out in our last series so we can do you know transparent URL style slash images slash background dot jpg we want it to repeat and we want it to scroll we'll go ahead and save that and before I go any farther and forget we need to actually put our images um, onto our uh, our thing here so let me grab those and I'll replace the images folder in here and now you can see I have all my images to work with okay so now we've set the body background uh, to repeat um, both on the x-axis and y-axis and that will give us our little noise that we um, chopped out earlier let's go ahead and set the color to white any of the default uh, default font color and the font family to Arial and then fall back onto uh, just a sans serif but luckily for us Arial is one of the most common if not the most common um, web font so almost everybody should should have the font that we're using we can go ahead and save that and um, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at that make sure everything turned out how we expected it to and yeah there's our repeating little uh, blue background with our noise on it and this will look a lot better when there's more content filling it in um, so just uh, follow along here now what we need to do is if we look at the um, screenshots everything here is centered and uh, I happen to know from uh, measuring the PSD that all of the, the content is 800 pixels wide so we need everything to be centered uh, inside of a div um, you know and uh, inside and uh, have a width of 800 pixels so that's what we're gonna do so let's go into header.php and let's give a div ID of wrap right underneath the body tag we'll save that then we'll go into footer and right before the closing body tag We'll end our div and we'll give a little comment to ourself here, end wrap. And that way we know what's going on. So now all of our content on our, uh, all of our content is now, you know, wrapped within this div ID of wrap. And now what we can do, and this should be general styles, not header styles. Okay. So now what we can do is give a div ID of wrap. We could say width 800 pixels margin zero auto and that's all we need to do to center our content now, whoops so if I refresh okay and there we go so now Matt no uh, excuse me no matter the monitor size um, the content will be uh, will be centered at 800 pixels width okay Well, next we want to uh, go ahead and get our logo and our uh, navigation ready. So what I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to wrap the logo and the navigation inside an ID of header. As this will be, uh, will contain all of our header information here. We can kind of space this out some to keep some clean code. 
Okay. Now I know we don't need the blog info description right now. Um, so we can get rid of that. And now I'm going to give the H1, uh, the header 1 tag, an ID of logo. And, uh, you know, we could target it with just header H1, but I prefer just to work with an ID. Uh, it helps keep me organized, and it's, you know, it's, a, it's just my preference uh, of doing things. And then I'm going to scroll down to the unordered list here and give it an ID of nav. Okay, so now we have our logo and our navigation all inside of a div ID with header, and um, our H1 has an ID of logo, and our unordered list that contains our navigation has an ID of nav. Okay, now next thing you'll see is it says inside for our actual text, we're just getting the blog info name. Now this is uh, usually really helpful as we don't even have to type anything in manually there. But we do need um, to get the paper from paper business to be a different font weight than business. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take out the blog info name. We're going to type in um, span paper close the span space business and that um, is going to uh, let us style the paper uh, separately from the business word so go ahead and save that and um, and yeah let's go ahead and uh, you know make sure everything's still going okay and then we'll start styling all that okay you can see our blog info description disappeared uh, we have our ugly looking logo right now and our uh, ugly looking navigation now what we need is for this logo to be down you know here a little bit with more of a margin and for all of this navigation to be kinda over here to the right of the logo and, uh, and, and they need to be in line horizontally not uh, not vertically like they are now as seen in the screenshot so let's just jump into our style.css and make this uh, make this happen the last general style I'm going to give this is uh, for our anchor tags, and I'm just going to say text decoration none, because I do not want them to be underlined by default. Okay, and now we'll do header styles. Is This is going to be styling everything in our header, which is our logo and our navigation. We're going to go to our div ID of header, which is where um, all of our header is wrapped in we're just going to give it some basic margins right now. So we'll give it 40 pixels on the top, none on the right, 20 on the bottom, none on the left. Simple enough. Scroll down and we'll do H1 ID of logo. Okay. Now uh, from just kind of experimenting and messing around I know some of this stuff but just follow along and then we'll look at the result. Uh, we need to work on the typography a little bit so the letter spacing is actually going to be one pixel which will give us some more uh, spacing in between those uh, individual letters and make it look more like the original PSD design. We need to float this left so we can um, have our navigation hanging to the right of it. We'll give it a margin of uh, 80 pixels on the right which will push away our navigation um, you know and give it some spacing away from our logo increase the font size to about 35 pixels we're gonna use a nice little text transform here and we're gonna say lowercase now we've already typed it lowercase in our um, in our header here but let's go ahead and change it uh, just to paper business and um, and in case anybody were to type it differently and you know you wanted it to show up in search engines would crawl it uh, with uppercase instead of lowercase and then we can use CSS to um, you know and to to handle the um, the design aspect of our logo so it's always just kinda nice to separate um, you know your CSS from your HTML which is why we'll let our CSS take this and put it all into lowercase as it is in the uh, final design and uh, lastly we need to say font weight normal because we only want the span tag that's inside of our ID of logo to have the uh, to have the bold font weight so let's do that now h1 uh, ID of logo span so any span that's inside the uh, the header one tag with the uh, ID of logo is going to get a font uh, weight 
of bold. Let's go ahead and save that and see what we're looking at. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, not quite there, but we're getting there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to say H1 logo A. So any anchor tags inside of our um, logo header will have a color of white. And there you go, you can see that worked. And you know, I'm not the greatest designer, but I think that we got this part of our lo logo, the typography part, I think we got that looking pretty close to this. Um, you know, I just kind of messed around with the letter spacing and the font weights and it came out um, you know, pretty nicely. So I'm glad we don't need to use an image for that. And uh, again, hats off to Jeffrey for just you know, using such simple fonts to make a great design. It's really a, it's a really talented designer. So um, let's move uh, back into our CSS. And now we've, we have all of our, our logos looking good. We have it where we want it. Um, we have the, amount, the right spacing um, right here for it. But now we need to get this navigation looking better. Well, we'll just take that one at a time. We'll say unordered un list uh, with an ID of nav. Again, I'm going to mess with the letter spacing here and give it one pixel as I think that just looks more like the actual design. Um, I'm going to give it a line height of 50 pixels and you'll see why a little later on. Give it a font size of 15 pixels. And go ahead and save that. Okay, and now for our lists inside our unordered lists, we want to float them to the left so they line up horizontally. We want to give them a display of inline uh, to fix any um, float bugs that might come into play later. And we want to go ahead and give him a margin of 20 pixels on the right. And you'll notice I could have just done margin right. I prefer to kind of just do the shorthand margin like this all the time, even if I'm messing with just one property. Um, and the reason being is because I can say I need some margins later on. I can just come back and, you know, if I need a 10 pixel margin on the top, I can just click, you know, hit 10 pixels. I don't have to type out margin top, you know, margin right. So that's why I do that, if you're wondering. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, nice, looking uh, a lot better. We still need to work on the color here of these links. Um, and uh, one quick thing, let's take out that line height of 50 pixels because I want you guys to understand why we're doing that. Let's just take it out and save it without it real quick. Okay. Now, don't worry about this, uh, the footer not clearing yet, but notice how the navigation, um, even though it's horizontally um, you know, positioned correctly, it's, it needs to be you know, in the middle here of paper business. It's too, um, you know, the, so we can just get that with the line height, say line height of 50 pixels, and we can kind of bring it down vertically here to line up more of where we want it um, with one of the S's in business. So, you know, that's one of the ways of doing that. And I'm sure that you could come up with a lot of more creative ways of getting that done, but I thought that was quick and easy. So now let's go down and say unordered list nav. And any list with the class of current page item and then the anchor tag inside of that. And we're going to say border bottom, two pixels, solid, and it's going to be uh, 6D8CA4. And I went into Photoshop and got that out with the eyedropper tool, if you're wondering. Uh, I did not guess. And lastly, we just need to uh, color the rest of the links. So then we'll just say, uh, you know, uh, unordered list, nav, um, and any of the anchor links inside of that will be white. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll go over here. And now you can see that we have the, you know, the border on the current page item, the about, um, you know, none of, none of the other ones have it, but everything now is white. I think the typography looks pretty close to it, you know, not exactly, but pretty close. Um, so if you guys compare those two, I think that you know, our logo and our navigation are looking pretty good. And of course, our logo, you know, is clickable. So um, if we go to about, 
you know, and don't worry about any of the styles right now, but you can see that our we've used that current page item class um, to uh, to give a nice little border to the um, well to the current page item. So um, so that's how to get a static page in WordPress. Um, what's going to happen next is we're going to go into oh front page, and we're going to create another custom page and include our slider here, and uh, I think we're going to touch on that tomorrow because we kind of covered a lot of ground today. Anyway, um, yeah, next time we will touch on our slider. Uh, this will go in between the get header and get footer and our front page, um, and we will just you know we won't touch on the slider. We will start building it, and uh, that might take us uh, two or three parts, but we'll just see. Uh, I guess we'll just see how it goes. So I hope all of you had a great Easter. Um, if you have any questions, you know, just ask. I'm just, you know, kind of taking this a day at a time. So any comments or questions, um, suggestions, always appreciated. Um, you know, hope you guys have a great day and happy WordPress coding.